In this video, we're going to talk about a type of depreciation that some people find a little bit unintuitive, and it's called some of the year's digits depreciation. But we're going to work through an example, and I, I think it'll be a little bit easier uh, to understand. Now, first off, it's important to note that this is an accelerated type of depreciation method, similar to double declining balance, for example. And, and what I mean by accelerated is that we're taking higher depreciation uh, in the early years of the asset. So higher depreciation in the early years, like years 1, 2, 3, are going to have more depreciation than years 10, 11, 12, so forth. And the idea being uh, that the asset is more productive in those early years. And in the, the final years of its useful life, it's, it's incurring a lot of maintenance and, and so forth. So we're going to take more depreciation uh, early on. So let's just work through an example. And again, we'll, we'll use the idea of uh, that you're, you're running a pizzeria. Uh, so in our example, you decide to buy a, a pizza oven and we need to depreciate that piece of equipment. And so let's say the useful life that you estimate for your pizza oven, let's say that that is five years. And then we need to know the cost of the asset that you're placing into service. And let's say that this pizza oven cost you $50,000. And then we also need to know the salvage value or residual value of the asset. What is it? What, what do you estimate it's going to be worth at the end of its useful life, at the end of those uh, five year uh, five year period? Uh, so let's just say that it's, it's not going to have any salvage value. Basically, it's, it's going to be junked. Um, so now we're going to put together a table similar how we had a table for double declining balance it's just a little bit easier to understand what's going on uh, so we'll just have the years so basically this will be we'll have like year one two three four and five these are the years that the asset uh, is in service then we're also going to have something that we'll just call our depreciation base our depreciation base. Now in this case, because we don't have any salvage value, our salvage value is zero, the depreciation base is going to be this $50,000. That's basically what we're depreciating. Oh, let me let me go back to a different color so this doesn't all look the same. So that's, that's uh, $50,000. So if we had a salvage value, uh, then we would just adjust um, the depreciation base. So let's say the salvage value was was five thousand. Apologize for my penmanship. Then this would be forty five thousand would be the depreciation base. Uh, so that's that's how you can think about this depreciation base. Basically, uh, we're trying to figure out how much cost we have to spread over the life of this asset. Now we also need to know uh, for some of the years digits we need to know something called the remaining life of the asset. And basically, the remaining life, we're just saying, okay, at the beginning of year one, how many, uh, how many, how many more years do we estimate this asset is going to be in service? Well, it's going to be in service five years, like January 1st of year one. Uh, we're looking forward and saying, okay, this asset's going to be in place for five years. And by year two, now, uh, you know, one of those years has elapsed, so now the remaining life is four. And then the next year, the remaining life is two, or excuse me, three, and then two, and then one. So basically, it's it's just the reverse uh, of this. We're just saying how many years are, are left. Um, and now the reason we're doing that is that's going to give us something uh, called the depreciation fraction, or I'll just I'll just call it here fraction. And this is going to allow us to calculate the depreciation. So basically, what we do, the reason this is called some of the year's digits is we're going to take these digits here this is this is the year and we're going to make this fraction now in this fraction uh, the bottom of the fraction is going to be the sum of these digits so basically one plus two plus three and so forth we just add up all these numbers so we have three six ten fifteen so these numbers if you add them up they add up to fifteen and that is going to be the bottom of our fraction. So what's going to be the top of our fraction? What are we going to have here? 
Well, we're just going to have our remaining life, this column. So now we're going to have, I'll just bring that 5 over here, and in this case, we're going to bring the 4 to be the top of the fraction, the numerator, and then we're going to have uh, the denominator is always going to be the same. That's always going to be the sum of the year's digits. That's going to be that 15. So basically, we end up with 3 over 15, then 2 over 15, and then 1 over 15. So each year, we're going to take a certain amount of depreciation. And now, well, actually, let me write this final column now. The final column is going to be depreciation expense. I'm running out of room. I apologize. So now I'm going to I'm going to put that in a different color so it's easy to easy to see. So now what we do is we just take uh, this depreciation base and multiply it by the fraction that we've created. All right. So now we just take this five over fifteen and multiply that by our depreciation uh, depreciation base. And our depreciation base, I should. I should fill this out here for completeness sake. It's going to be the same every year, the 50,000. And we just multiply that by our fraction. And again, the fraction we just got the denominator is the sum of the year's digits. And then the numerator is this remaining life column. We just bring it over. So 50,000 times 5 over 15, what's that yield? That's going to give us 16,000. 667. 16667. And then in the, the for year two, no, so that's our depreciation for year one, right? We debit depreciation expense for $16,667. Now, what about year two? Well, we just do basically the same thing. We take 50,000, but now we're multiplying it by 4 divided by 15. So what is 50,000 times 4 over 15? Well, it's 13,333. Now remember, we said that this was an accelerated depreciation method, so depreciation would be more in the early years, and you see now it is declining. right? We have more depreciation in year 1 than we do in year 2, and it'll, it'll continue on with that pattern. So for year 3, take the 50,000 depreciation base, multiply it by 3 over 15. And that yields ten th and even ten thousand dollars. And then year four, uh, we're going to take the the fifty thousand, multiply it by two over fifteen, uh, and that's going to yield six thousand six hundred and sixty-seven. And then our final year, uh, we're going to have the fifty thousand times the one over fifteen, and that's going to give us three thousand three hundred and thirty-three. So. If we were to total up the depreciation expense for all those periods, for all, all five years, it would end up giving us $50,000. So what have we done here? Well, we had an asset with $50,000. Uh, that, that was the cost, the depreciable base, no salvage value, and we fully depreciated it over its useful life of five years. We took more depreciation in the early years. Here, year one, 16,667. In the last year, just a little over 3,000. Right, so we, we had declining depreciation as, as the asset uh, was, was used more and became less productive. But ultimately, we, we accumulate depreciation of 50,000. And now our asset doesn't have any book value. It's been, it's been fully depreciated. Now, what if we were to change the salvage value and say it's not zero, it's 5,000. Well, what would change? Well, basically our depreciation base would change. So each year, instead of having 50,000, we'd now have 50,000 minus 5,000, right? So that would be 45,000. And it'd be 45,000 each period, but our fraction wouldn't change. We'd still have in year one, we'd be taking five over 15 and multiplying that by the 45,000. And then ultimately, we would only be taking uh, enough depreciation to get us down to the salvage value of 5,000. So instead of taking 50,000 of depreciation over the years and the asset having zero uh, value at the end, uh, we'd be basically spreading 45,000 in depreciation expense over the five years. And then that would leave us with the salvage value 
of 